Good morning. morning. Well, as you can see, pastor's gone and the mics work, so (laughs) hopefully we'll have a good service today. uh, We'd like to keep in prayer with pastor. He's on a vacation and he finally got to go back and see his family in in Michigan, and so him and his wife and the kids seem to be having a great time, and uh, just keep them in prayer uh, for safe travel and a great time. as you can see this morning, the church is a little fuller uh, in conjunction with a, a birthday I hear that we're having. So, <laughs> for Mer- uh, uh, Mildred Hartman. So, Ke- sorry, Karen Byer. I, I got a lot of names going through. I apologize, Karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, happy birthday. And uh, as you can read in the bulletin, there will be. Uh, cake served after the service this morning. So after the service, if you would remain seated, we're going to have the VBS program right afterwards. So we'll give the kids and the ladies some time to set up and, and uh, we'll continue with that. Then we'll go down and have cake and then the potluck to follow with that. So i uh, like to welcome Michael Brandt this morning. He's going to be doing the message this morning. And a little bit about Michael, I don't think he knows this, but uh, the church first sent Jeremy and I with the youth group down to Colorado on this, on our fly trip. And Jeremy and I didn't know what we were getting into because we had just left the ELCA for the AFLC. And we didn't know what we were getting into, and we were really skeptical. And we got down there, and Michael Brandt was one of the first speakers that night. And we told, I told Jeremy, we were both blown away with what he had to say as a message. And he's never disappointed after that. But he, we'd come back to our bunks that night, and we said, if this is what this church is about, we know we're in good hands. So we want to thank you because you were also part of what kept us in here and kept the faith going. And we've always looked up to you for that. So <laughs> thank you for it. So looking forward to your message this afternoon. Or, a little while later. So, uh, we'd also, as you can read in the, your announcements here, we have uh, the Vilmo family is hosting a combination of going away party and a retirement party for. It's going away party for Shayton, who is leaving Wednesday, is Tuesday for basics, and then a retirement for Doug uh, for Douglas. So, uh, come join them at the Lions Park in Armor after church for a get together. Uh, anything else on that or no okay now I can see where pastor says now you can't see Brian that's like a halo for you <laughs> uh, and then also we'd like to to be in, in prayer not only for Logan and Courtney Sorensen they had their little baby uh, a little baby girl uh, Ada Joanna so uh, be in prayer for them and congratulations. Are they here? I don't see them. So, nope. Okay. But keep them in prayer and also for congratulations to them. And uh, contact Pastor if you'd like an electric copy of the AFC annual conference report. So, uh, I would say maybe wait a week or two when he gets back. So, is there any other announcements that we need to make for the congregation? So, If not, uh, let us begin with our worship, with our call to worship. Uh, It's found in your bulletin. Please rise.
Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will Surely he will save you from the follower's snare and from the deadly pestilence. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor allow the flies by day. A thousands may fall at your side, ten thousands at your right hand, but it will not come near you. you will if you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our maker, redeemer, and comforter, we assemble in your presence to hear your holy word. We pray that you will open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word, we may be taught to repent of, your sin, of our sins, to believe in Jesus in life and in death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue with our opening hymn, 201, The Love of God.
himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us of all our sins. Knowing that when you do repent of your sins, you are forgiven for them. And he remembers them no more. Like our vacation Bible school lessons this week. God does not remember. He forgets them. They're gone. You may be seated. The first reading is from Jeremiah 20, verses 7 through 13. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long, and everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult, insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, so my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. The second reading comes from Romans 6, 12 through 23. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your moral body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have, come to your, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from the sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord.
hearts and of souls of everyone in this building. We call it a church, but we know your church is built within us. Lord, we are grateful that we have the freedoms in this country to worship you freely the way you are designed us to worship you. Lord, we thank you for so many benefits, so many gracious gifts that you have given us. Whether it may be the sun rises every morning, the sun sets every night, or the storms and rain that come throughout the day and evenings, not only to refresh the air, but refresh the ground, Lord, that we know everything comes from you. And we thank you, Lord, and we worship you for that. Lord, we do have a few prayers that we'd like you to hear for us today. For one, we'd like to bless Michael Brandt as he is with us today. Give him your knowledge through his, your words to him. We also ask, Lord, that you would be with Marilyn Brenner as she has a few injuries now and could use some healing from your hand. Along with her, Eileen England, who is now under hospice care in Arizona. May your hands be upon them, upon their shoulders and around them, that they may feel you comforting them and being a blessing to them. Lord, there are so many things that we are thankful for, concerned about, and unanswered. We ask that you be with the Khalid family as they are wondering how they feel aimlessly, Lord, waiting for you to answer their prayer, but still knowing that they will follow you wherever you lead them. Lord, there's so many right now that have a prayer that would like to ask you right now in this moment of silence.
bulletin today. Let's use the one from the bulletin as we read. In Jesus' name. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard, you will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what you are to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Here ends the reading of God's word. You may be seated. Where's the clock? (laughs) On my wrist. Okay. I don't have my wife with me today, so I don't have anyone to look to that's starting to frown. Who who would like that responsibility today? Oh, too many hands. Yeah. (laughs) It's good to be with you. I was thinking this morning when I was asking someone else to lead the service, who led it the last time I was here? Do you remember? Pastor came back early from his vacation, and he was here, and then I just said it would be much smoother if the service was led by you. And so it was Pastor who led that service. And I was so blessed by his leading as I was by yours today, I I think it's wonderful for me to be able to sit amongst the congregation and worship with you. It's a little bit different when you're leading in worship than when you're sitting with the congregation. And wow, are you good singers. Uh, Kevin Kevin had told me, um, are there hymns that you would like to have, have sung? The one I wanted sung was Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. And then I saw in the bulletin the asterisk where you stand and where you sit. And I was thinking, going to be a little strange, but we're going to be sitting on stand up, stand up for Jesus. But then you, isn't it a lot of Germans here? Some of you caught on and stood up as we were singing. That was, that was great to do. Pastor also said that I could share just a little bit from the annual conference, and he was going to share a little bit more when he returns, one of the things I was thinking about that I would like to share with you goes along with the message I'm sharing today. There's a a new ministry that's taking root within the AFLC. It's not under any of the corporations. It's just a a group of pastors. One of them is Barry Nelson down in Tripp, the Tripp Delmont area, and it's called Two Kingdoms Ministry. In the Bible, we see that God created two kingdoms, the kingdom of his church. Isn't it it wonderful to be in church today? Thank you. (laughs) We we have one Christian with us today. (laughs) It is is wonderful to have this freedom of worship. However, it's one that's being lost more and more for a number of reasons. One of the reasons it's being lost is because of the carelessness of our flesh. More and more churches across the nation today are experiencing decline. People no longer take the blessing of the kingdom God has established through his church as something to cherish. And so it's become a real convenience issue, no longer a conviction but a convenience issue. If it's convenient for me to worship, I'm going to be there. I'm sad to see that. The other kingdom God has established is the kingdom of government. God tells us within his word that all rule has been established by him, good and bad. 
We see that throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. But God has given the Christian the influence in both kingdoms. God wants us to have a wonderful influence in the kingdom of the church. BBS is an example of that. I'm looking forward to that program today. You've got to have that good influence in the lives of children, teaching them the truth, setting an example of that truth before children, right here within the kingdom of the church that God has given us. And then within the community, the kingdom of government, God wants us as Christians to have an influence. That's been sorely missing. We've been too silent. Many things that are opposed to the counsel of God's word have taken root in government, have taken root right within our own communities, have taken place in places of education and really undermine the righteousness of God. And God would say to us as believers, as those who have been saved from our sin, those who have been brought under the counsel of his almighty word, he would say to us, stand up. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for the counsel of God's word right here in your community, in your schools. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Well, this Two Kingdoms Ministries is, is being organized for that very purpose. We're giving resources to pastors, to laymen alike that they can use in, in standing up for God both within the church and within the kingdom of government for the good of God. The government is not to infringe on the rights of the church, but the church is to have an influence of righteousness upon the government. Then just a little bit about the ministry of shepherding. We continue to go from church to church. I was really honored when Pastor Kevin invited me to come and fill the pulpit in his absence. Uh, we continue to travel to a lot of different states. Last year, we were in 18 different states and in 16 different evangelical denominations. Uh, normally, Colleen would be with me. I was wishing that when I was driving out here today, but back at our home church at Abiding Savior, they're having an important congregational meeting today after the service, and I told her, you've got to represent the Brandt family at that congregational meeting. Uh, she wasn't too slad, sad to be able to sleep in either. Uh, that didn't hurt her feelings uh, at all. And we, we cherish your prayers as you remember us. I have an opportunity every Saturday morning to send out a devotional to 120 different pastors. Your pastor is one of them. This morning he wrote a text message back to me telling me that he was praying for, for me. And then he did something that no other pastor has ever done for me before. In that text message he said, there are three books on my desk. I'd like to give them to you as a gift. And so if my 76-year-old mind can remember, I'm going to take those three books home with me today. And maybe you that are younger would make sure that I remember to do that today. Let's bow together in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, I thank you for the blessing of proclaiming your word. I ask now that you would touch each of our hearts with this word, that our hearts would be open to be receptive. We pray that you would rebuke Satan, who would want to take away the seed of your good word. And we pray today for Pastor and his family, continue to rest your hand upon them. We pray for the work of the church here. Thank you for the VBS program to follow. Thank you for the word that has been sown into the hearts of children. Thank you for every volunteer that stood up and was used by you today. And we pray, Lord, for this community. We thank you for the goodness of your hand upon us in the rain showers that have taken place. And we would ask for more. We would ask you to shower your rain through the word upon us right now. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would turn in your Bibles or take that sheet that you were given uh, on the gospel text and follow along, I'd really appreciate it. The sermon text today is, don't worry. Anytime someone tells me not to worry, 
What do I do? You worry. It's just like I've heard, I've heard pastor after pastor say things like, don't think about a pink elephant. And then they'll ask the people, what are you thinking about? Pink elephant. That's kind of like what saying don't worry is. You say it, yet it's a natural thing to do. I am very concerned about what's happening in our country and around the world today. And I'm sure you are too. The gospel text today really addresses that. Jesus was setting forth the mission for his disciples. It's still a mission that he sets forth for us today. What we're reading for the disciples to hear is the very thing God wants us to read for us to hear today. I think that's important to take to heart. These words weren't meant just for them. They're words for us. They're prophetic words that really speak of the age in which we are living. And then when you take these words to heart today, it's not only the understanding of these words, it's the living of them, isn't it? I think far too often a lot of us as followers of Christ have understood his word, but we haven't necessarily lived it out for one reason or another. Whether it's been in our own families, our own neighborhoods, or within our own nation, we have failed to live it out. And I pray today that as you listen to the preaching of this word, that you would be asking in your own heart that God would help you to live it out. That this would be a living word, which it is, never to return void, but that this living word would then be allowed to live through you. Not just in you, but through us. Let's look at that very first verse, verse 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. Quite an assignment that Jesus is giving, a challenging assignment. Think of what happened to the disciples. All but one of them was martyred for their faith, was put to death because they stood upon the truth that Jesus had taught them, that Jesus had given them. And as they went out and they lived that truth, great opposition rose up against them. The only one that was not martyred was John. He was put in prison on an island, Patmos. There he received the vision of revelation that we so cherish within the word of God. But all of the rest of them were martyred for their faith. Why? Because the ministry was in the midst of wolves. Today, society is much like that towards Christianity. It's as though the principles of Christianity, the Ten Commandments, for instance, think of those commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Think of all the gods in this world, right within our own nation, right within our own community, that come before the one true God. My dad told me once after I was converted, he said, Michael, you will really know what your God is. Your God is what will take first place with your time. Your God is what will take first place with your heart's desire. Your God is what will take first place with your money, what you invest in. He said, Michael, it won't be too hard to figure out if you're serving some God other than the one true God. Hasn't that happened within America today? And maybe rather than just making it a generic in America, hasn't that happened right within our local communities? That so many things can push God into second or third or fourth place in our life? Jesus said to his disciples and he says to us, I'm sending you out into the midst of wolves. That's challenging. And today as Christians, we need to seize this challenge 
Note the last part of that verse. So be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. The counsel of Christ-like behavior. How did Jesus, in, in his ministry, when he went out amongst those that were so opposed to him, how did he set the example of being as shrewd as a snake and as innocent as a dove? Well, you know what a, a snake usually does with its, its prey is it lays in wait. It draws that person to themselves or that object to themselves. I believe Jesus did that same thing by asking a lot of good questions. And I have found that really helpful for me in this day and age. When I'm confronted by people that have views that oppose the teaching of Scripture, whether it's views on sexual issues, views on marriage, views on the sanctity of life, I begin to ask them questions. And as I ask them questions, they're drawn in to consider, consider the truth. That's the very way that Jesus was used. He didn't necessarily come to browbeat them, but rather draw them in to consider the word of truth that would bring conviction and cause them to turn. Remember Zacchaeus, tax collector? Remember the rich young ruler that said, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus, through a series of questions, drew them in. And in the case of Zacchaeus, he was converted. Sadly, in the case of the rich young ruler, he walked away, followed his own course of action. But in both cases, Jesus was shrewd in drawing them to himself. And I believe we need to use the same tactics today. Last night I was with a grandpa, another grandpa just like me in Sioux Falls, and he was telling me of an occasion that he had recently with a grandchild. And the grandchild had been indoctrinated in some, in some things that were most definitely false. And the grandpa had a choice. He could say in a loud, authoritative voice, that's, that's completely ridiculous, that's false. But he chose instead to ask some questions. And before that conversation had ended, that granddaughter had come to say this, I think I need to think about this a little bit more. I believe we're in that age today that we need to use the shrewdness that Jesus sets the example in so that we can cause people to think a little deeper about those things that are leading them astray. And then as gentle as a dove, Jesus, in dealing with his enemies, except for the case where he drove the money changers from the temple, always dealt with people in love. Think of a prostitute that was bought before him that everybody wanted to have stoned. And in the midst of it, Jesus ministered to her. And after all of her accusers had walked away because Jesus had caused them to recognize they were without sin themselves, then he said to her ever so gently, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. I pray that you would think deeply on these things as God sends you out to your family, to your community. You're more than likely just like me. I have many family members in my extended family that really are struggling with the truth of God's word. Many of them have bought into the foolishness of this world's woke society and teachings. <clears throat> Many of them have bought into the cancel culture of today. And I pray for them. And I seek to be shrewd, to ask questions that will cause them to question the false things that they have been led to believe. I pray that I would be gentle and that you would be gentle in having a sincere love and compassion for their souls. 
Well, the second part is also valuable. Look at verses 17 now through 20. Let's read them once again. But be aware of men, for they will hand you over to courts, scourge you with their, in their synagogues, and you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. We're in that age right now. Even the courts and many, many ruling bodies across America are standing opposed to Christian values. As I was driving out here today, I, I'm listening to a news broadcast uh, right from the state of New Jersey. It's in one of the most conservative areas of the state of New Jersey. And the local people put into place in their school board some really great uh, moral, upright board members. And those board members made a decision that certain teachings concerning transgender issues, certain teachings concerning other sexual matters would not be allowed to stand in their school. The state of New Jersey, their attorney general, has bought a lawsuit against them. Here the community, the parents of these children, they are being overruled by the state's attorney general and today, that was broadcast. Sobering. Just like at the time when the disciples were sent out. Who did Jesus say they would be brought before? Well, they could be brought before the synagogue. Think how the church has strayed today. As you made a decision to walk away from the liberal teachings of a church denomination. As you made a stand. I commend you. But when you look at the broader landscape of America today, most of the mainline denominations have turned against the Word of God. The counsel of God in regards to sexual identity, God making men and women, been thrown out. God's teachings in regards to the sanctity of life, thrown out. God's teachings in regards to the sanctity of marriage, tossed aside. Just like Jesus was saying would take place in the synagogues of their time. We're facing the same things as the disciples faced. And then he said, not only there, but you're going to be taken before kings and governors. That very thing is happening today. In the state of Minnesota, just this past year, if you as a parent are hindering your child from exploring the possibilities of changing their gender, you as a parent can have those children taken away from you. The state says those children are more ours than they are yours. The twisted thinking that is very much described right here by Jesus is being very much lived right within our nation today. Where are you going to stand? Follow on in verse 19. But when they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to say, for it will be given you in that very hour what you are to say, for it is not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Jesus, in John chapter 15, verse 18, said this word of counsel. Remember, before they hated you, they hated me. And then remember that Jesus was taken before rulers, wasn't he? Remember when he was taken before Pontius Pilate? Remember when he was taken before the synagogue rulers? And in each and every case... At the proper time, God the Father gave Jesus just the word to say. Now Jesus says to us, don't be afraid of what you are to say, for at that hour I will give you that word to say. That grandpa I referred to just a few minutes ago in the message, 
I believe he was given the right word to say at the right time to that granddaughter to help her think through, think again on some of the things that she had been so convinced of, that maybe the things she had been convinced of, the things that had been brainwashing her, really were not the truth. God gave that grandpa the right words, the right questions to ask at the right time. I hope you believe that for your own life. Because I think there's one great sin that has come into the church. And it's this, the sin of silence. Why have we been so cowardly to raise up our voice? God would want us to raise up our voice. On Friday, I was at a meeting of the Family Heritage Alliance in Sioux Falls. At the Family Heritage Alliance, there was a representative of the state legislature uh, whose first name is John. He is from Del Rapids. And he came to that meeting, and he was sharing with the group what has happened on the landscape of America since Roe versus Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court. And sadly, what has happened is a lot of turmoil that has really caused confusion in many states. For instance, the state of Kansas is a very conservative state. But sadly, the state of Kansas, its voters, have reversed their decision on abortion. And now in the state of Kansas, abortion is once again legalized because what happened at Roe versus Wade and the Dobbs Amendment is that the control was sent back to the states. Every state can decide what its rulings are going to be in regards to abortion or pro-life. And the abortion movement has come into these states with great amounts of money to change the vote and the constitution of those states. Were you aware that that's happening in South Dakota right now? That there's a group in South Dakota, very much misnamed, it's called Dakotans for Health. South Dakotans for Health. It's a pro-abortion movement, and they're seeking to have on the next election, on the 2024 election, a change to our Constitution, and that change, if passed, will permit abortion through all nine months of pregnancy. And by the way, they have people having folks like you sign a petition. They're right in Sioux Falls. They were at the farmer's market again this Saturday. Had a table set up. You know what the sign on their table says? We're pro-life. We're pro-family. They're neither of those things. Very deceptive, like a serpent, like the deceiver, and people signing the petition so that this constitutional measure will get on the ballot in 2024. There is a movement right now sponsored by FHA called Decline to Sign trying to inform people like you, don't be sucked in to sign something that is completely false, that will allow abortion to rule in the state of South Dakota. Look at the scripture we just read. The very things that Jesus was saying to the disciples about the the atmosphere that they would go and minister in is the same atmosphere today, that of Satan's deception. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. And then finally, look at these last words, verse 21 and following. Brother will betray brother to death. Father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel 
until the Son of Man comes. Families will be divided. That happened then. It's happening now. Brother against brother. Children against parents. All over. More than likely right here. You speak the truth about what the Word of God says, there is someone who will be opposed to it. Families being torn apart. That ruling in the state of Minnesota where children can all of a sudden say to their parents, I believe that I am a different gender than what you have said I am. And I want to have some hormones, or I want to have some chemical castration so that I can become the gender I want. And if you as, your, as their parents say, no, you need emotional, you need mental loving care, you need spiritual care, that child has the legal right to move out of your home. The state has the legal right to take that child from your home. Did you think you would see this in your lifetime? I didn't. And yet it is where we are. But don't worry. God will help us if we will but call on him. The need, though, is for us to call on him. To be available to him. Don't worry. If you are willing to speak up, he will give you the words to speak. But speak up. Don't worry. There is a home in heaven that awaits us. Just as it awaited those disciples who became martyrs. This world was not their home. And this world is not my home. Don't worry. Be happy in Jesus. Be confident in Christ. Stand solidly upon his word. Don't worry. Be confident. Let the joy of God live through you. Amen. Father in heaven, I do pray today that you would help us to recognize that just as you sent the disciples into the midst of wolves, so you send us. Help us to take this banner and gladly allow it to be shown through our lives and through our words that we would hold to you, O Christ. And Lord, we see the devastation that Satan has brought, the deception that he has brought upon, upon people into families, into communities, even into churches. And you, Lord, would want us to stand and to be willing to speak. Help us to be courageous in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Would you take your hymnal and turn to number 510? And let's stand together as we sing only the first and fourth stanzas. One and four. Let's stand together.
first display. sobering message today, I know. Uh, I believe it's important right now that we just take a moment of silent prayer before we have the Lord's Prayer. I don't know what you might be wrestling with, maybe right within your own family, but I pray that you would lay it before the Lord today and ask Him, ask Him to enable you to stand, stand up for Jesus, stand up for the truth, to stand on the truth in love. I just want you to know that this is a battle that the Lord, the Lord can handle. But he needs us as soldiers of the cross to make ourselves available. Would you bow in silent prayer with me for a season? Jesus, no doubt there are many here who know of loved ones or friends that have been caught up in the deceptions of the world today. We love them, Lord, as you love them. You know our hearts, Lord. We ask you to forgive us for the times we have been silent when you have wanted us to lovingly speak up to be as wise as a serpent, to know how to ask questions, to be as gentle as a dove in expressing genuine compassion. And Lord, we ask you to help us. We pray that you would give us wisdom and that we would also be given faith to believe that you will give us the very words that you would want us to say. We trust you for that. Thank you for teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember that after the benediction, after the doxology, we would just ask you to be seated for the Vacation Bible School program. Receive now the benediction of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Bye.
of the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. While they're setting up here, uh, and the whole congregation is here, can we all sing happy birthday to Mrs. Byer? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Karen. Happy birthday to you. Karen, this is the foundation that you have started. Thank you. All right, we had a very fun week at VBS. This year we actually had 18 kids start out on Monday from preschool through fourth grade. And I don't know if this is God working or if um, Pastor gave you a heads up, but our theme for our week was Keepers of the Kingdom. And we were talking about the two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. So that is what we learned about all week and also putting on the armor of God. I'd like to thank all of the parents for sharing your kids with us this week. Um, I want to thank Pastor and Jackie, Rod and Connie and Morgan for helping throughout the week. And a huge thank you to both Taylor and to Jairus for being here every day and sticking with me and helping out. You were a huge, huge help, and I could not have done it without everyone. Um, and then, kids, we had a lot of different game nights, but what was your favorite game night? You can all answer. Friday night, Ty and Bailey and Travis used their creativity and they built us an obstacle course outside. And the kids had a great time with that. Um, on Wednesday night, we went to the villa and we sang some of our songs and shared Bible verses with the residents. <laughs> then we went to the Lions Park for supper and some playtime. Um, we did a few crafts, those are on display downstairs, so please be sure to take a look at everything the kids made this week. And now the kids are going to share a little bit of each day what they learned and also some songs. And I'll start us out with the Monday. Um, on Monday they learned about the battle between the two kingdoms. The kingdom of light, which is ruled by the good king, our creator God, and the kingdom of darkness, which is ruled by the enemy Satan. Each day we watched a short video featuring a different animal. And on Monday our animal pal was Winnie the Warhorse. And our Bible verse for that day was Ephesians 6 verses 10 and 11. They also did a lot of memorizing this week. So now we'll test them. Okay. You get strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11. Good job, guys.
On, on Tuesday, we learned about putting on the armor of God, starting with the belt of truth. The belt of truth helps us to have trust in God's word. It also helps us to live as truthful people and to stand strong in our, in our truth against the world. Our animal pal was Wiley the fox, and our Bible verse was Ephesians 6, verse 14. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of tr truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians 6, verse 14. On Wednesday, we continued putting on the armor of God by adding the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes of peace. The breastplate helps us put on Christ's righteousness and grow in right living. The shoes show us that we can be at peace with God, which helps us stand firm in our Christian beliefs and share Jesus with others. Our animal pal was Grimwald the Dragon, and our Bible verse was Ephesians 6.15. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Ephesians 6.15.
On Thursday, we put on the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. They protect us from the enemy's attack of false teaching and temptation. Our animal pop was Byron the Iron Clan Beetle. And our Bible verse was Ephesians 6.16. All circumstances take up the shield of faith, but anguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Ephesians 6, 16. On Friday, we ended our week learning the sword of sword of the spirit is the word of God, which helps us train our brains to know, memorize, love, and obey God's word. And that, as we battle, we must pray. Our animal pal was Sky the Perican Falcon, and our Bible verse is Ephesians 6, verse 17, 18a. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, pray at all times in the Spirit.
All right, that is the end of our program. So we'll have coffee and cake for Karen downstairs and then we'll start our meal about 11.15.